so here we are in the, the multiplayer map. So this is a personal map for you. Everyone that plays online will get one. And so what it is, you have 65 regions in Japan and then uh, 12 naval regions as well. So what the idea is, you want to um, take your piece here and you want to go along all of Japan, colouring the pieces in every time you win a battle. Uh, the reason you do this is, um, so for example, if you, if you land on an area that has a dojo, then you'll unlock a new unit, for example. So you may get a new really powerful cavalry unit or archer, all that kind of thing. Um, if you land on one that doesn't have a dojo on it, uh, like any, any one of the other ones, um, you'll get an ancillary. Uh, so we've got a new system this time where when you go into a battle, you get these ancillaries. Think of them almost like cards with different bonuses attributed to them. So you may have one that gives you, I don't know, 5% speed boost or it disables the enemy in some way. So as you level up, you can take more of these cards into battle with you. Um, so the idea is you go around and you can pick any arrow you want. And then when you say, OK, I'm going to fight here, you'll go into an online battle. And so you're, you're, the person you're up against could be trying to get this region. You don't actually fight on that physical reason, region. But what it means is once you've won your battle, then on your personal map, then that area is unlocked for you. So you can decide how you go about the map and what things you want to try and explore first. So you may, I'm not sure if you can really see it, but there's, for example, uh, multiple bows and arrows here, multiple you know, sword units. And so as you go across the map, you get increasingly more powerful versions of these units. And also, if you uh, decide you want to have a naval battle, if you move the ship along here and you capture one of these re regions, it means that your, your soldiers there can move basically all the way along Japan very quickly if you start winning a few naval battles. Now, there's tons of other stuff you can do as well. There's, for example, you can set up a team if you, you've got some friends online and you just want to you know, play Shogun 2 together all evening, going into different lobbies and hanging out together. You can absolutely do that. Um, there's also match bay battles. Um, I'll talk about some of the features of this later, but basically, um, if you want to be involved in any of the leaderboards or any of the clan competitions, you need to have a match-made battle. So what that means is that the system will pick an equal opponent to you. So it's not just that you've got a really weak friend or something and you keep beating him so you can level up and he does the same thing. No. Um, so you have to go in a match-made battle if you want to progress through the leaderboards. Okay, then there's the battle list as well. Uh, this is basically, if you just want to go online and play a battle and you don't care about any of this stuff, and you want a huge army against another huge army with like a billion pounds, then you can still do that. So all the classic multiplayer options are still there. Okay, uh, so this is your avatar. This is your general in battle. So every time you go into a battle, you'll see this guy. You can completely customise him, as I'll show you now. And I dare say I'll get some sort of description of it. This is the this avatar, is customization, avatar screen. customization screen. You can select equipment for your avatar and select choose equipment. a color scheme. Use the plus and minus buttons okay. to zoom and the arrow buttons to rotate him. Extra armor and equipment can be unlocked during your avatar's career and put into use on Pink. this screen. Pink's good. When ready, click on the tick That's button. Yellow. Can kind of, I'm pretty happy with that. So, okay, so uh, this is my customised avatar. Now, not only have I customised him, of course, when I'm in battle, the enemy will see him looking like this. Uh, and not only that, his, um, his little card that you get in the battle will be the colours that you've selected, which is kind of nice. So any character that you customise in the game, you'll, their little card at the bottom will look like those colours. Um, you also, as you've seen earlier, you have a mon thing. So this is your, your clan flag. Now, as you progress throughout the game, you'll unlock additional ones of these, and there's different ways of doing that. <laughs> there's also a skills tree. You can allocate skills as your avatar increases his rank. Two skill points are gained for every rank attained. The points you can spend are displayed in the bottom right-hand <laughs> corner of the panel. OK, so uh, this is the skills tree, and there's four different areas that you can hone your skills in and as you go throughout the game you'll get more points to spend. Now you won't get enough points to level up every single area so again what you'll want to do is decide which ones you want to go down which are the most appealing. So for example if you chose bow mastery you could become an expert sniper so then you'd be running through the forests picking people off and there's not really much they can do about it. 
Um, so we've got tons of different options in there so that hopefully by the time you've gone through all of these and you've really started customizing your army, your friends is going to be completely different. They're going to have different abilities, different attributes. Uh, when you progress throughout the game, you'll get traits attributed to you. So this is basically like a reflection of how you perform in the game. So for example, if you play games a lot and you, you start losing and you pull the plug out or you turn it off, you pour coffee on it, um, you'll get a badge saying you're a dishonorable coward, right? So anytime you go online, people will see that and they want to play against you. So that's kind of something we've got to stop people rage quitting. Mm -hmm. And of course, um, you'll get lots of different traits as well as you progress. So if you favor using cavalry, that will be listed on there. So people get an idea of what kind of general you are, but they don't know exactly what army you've got and all that kind of stuff. Also XP. So uh, there's 10 different levels available, um, and you get more stuff as you upgrade. Every time you play a battle, whether you win or lose it, you get XP. So every, uh, let me see, so every level you go, when you get halfway through that level, you get a point, which you can invest in stuff to unlock, and also when you get to the end of it as well. So there's, there's always new stuff, whether you're winning or losing, to sort of customize your characters. Okay, so you we have... You can review your retainers and select them for use in the next battle. Retainers are people, buildings, or objects that give bonuses to your army. Once you have successfully explored a province in a battle, the relevant retainer will appear here. As your avatar improves, up to five retainers will be available at once. Okay, so this is what I was talking about earlier. When you're going across the multiplayer map, you unlock these retainers, which are the cards you get, and of course there's a lot of them. Uh, on the first level, you've only got five to pick from. The particular one I've just chosen uh, just gives you, like, plus one to melee attack when you're an Ashigaru unit. So when you go throughout the game, there's lots of different ones of these that you can pick. Okay, clan tokens. So... In addition to the, the multiplayer map that you're playing on, there's also clans. If you choose to join one, um, we've got an entire league for clans, right? So you've got the, the top tier clan. So basically what happens is the map I showed you, um, think of it as a world, right? So you can have 24 clans per world, okay? And basically an infinite number of them. So you've got the, the top tier, which is the one everyone wants to be in. And so how that works is when you're going throughout the map, you have to all of your, the people in your clan have to try and fight for one region, and the clan with the most regions over a two-week period becomes the, you know, the winner of that map. So then they start to go up, and then others will go down. So um, we've got a massive clan thing going on. So yeah, when you get clan tokens, what that means is you can unlock additional um, abilities for your general, and you can upgrade your veteran units, all that kind of stuff. Okay, so when you first start playing multiplayer, you'll have a basic assortment of troops. You'll have some cavalry, you'll have some archers, some infantry, spear, and the like. And as you progress throughout the game, you, of course, unlock new ones as you capture the little dojos I was speaking about earlier. Also, what happens is when you're playing a battle, your individual units will get XP themselves. And um, you may be offered the chance to upgrade them. So if you upgrade a unit, it will become a veteran unit. Right, now, once something's become a veteran unit, then there's even more customization options available. But, um, yeah, so um, you've got a leaderboard which shows everybody in the world. Now, if, you, if you've gone through the entire map and you've unlocked every single region in the multiplayer map, then you get onto the, the Shogun League leaderboard. So that's basically you've conquered everything and you're competing with the best people in the world. Now, if you get on the Shogun leaderboard, there can only be one Shogun in the entire world. And if you become it, then you get, you get new armor and you get special achievements and all that kind of stuff. And of course, bragging rights for being the best person in the world. Now, I, I must tell you, everyone in our studio is currently going crazy trying to be the best person, because of course we've not released it. So everyone in the studio is trying to be the best person in the studio. So no one's really going home at all at the moment. <laughs> So that, that's basically a summary of uh, some of the new multiplayer features. There are more. What I'm going to do now is come out of here and just very quickly... So I'm going to get this battle started. Okay, so fortunately I've uh, picked right um, in defending this side because as you can see, the enemy are starting to come over the hill. Let's go down and take a look.
incidentally, as they march to their deaths, hopefully, um, I'll tell you a few facts about them. So um, we can have up to 65,000 troops on the screen at any one time. If we've got a fairly decent computer, we can throw 65,000 people around no problem. Also, all of the, uh, the animations this time, we've got the British Kendo Association to come in and do all of their fighting. We've got motion capture suits on them, and basically let them beat each other up for a week, and we've put all that stuff in the game. Okay. Also, if anyone likes numbers, another one is that uh, each unit in the, the game has 52 bones in their body, which is, I think, 25% more than in previous games. So that means the animation's a lot more fluid, they move a lot more realistically. Now what I'm doing at the moment, I'm just checking all primitive, uh, there they are, okay, so I put my second army in the wrong place, they're attacking me from somewhere else, I'm going to quickly try and move them around if I can. Okay, so they're starting to climb over my walls at the moment. Okay. Now it's very easy to, to control this if you played our previous game, simply Click on a unit and you can drag where you want them to go, let go, and they'll go there. And then if you press the spacebar button, you can see where they're going to. Okay, so I'll show you a little battle now. Okay, so I've won my first confrontation. Okay, this is interesting, so... You can see some of the enemy have decided they started off in three different formations. Some of them have now broken off and joined the main bulk of their army. Now you also have to be careful when you're playing this because sometimes you'll start off with two very clear armies but if you're not paying good attention to what they're doing a single unit can break off and go around the back and you know get straight into the capital and you know seize it. So you have to be very careful. Okay so um, I'm not going to play this whole thing but I'll explain to you a good tactic if you're playing a siege battle. Uh, so what you'd do is you'd set your archers up along the outside walls so if the enemy are coming in you can start obviously firing on them and you'll have some melee troops set up in case they come over the wall. Then what you'll do is as the enemy get closer you'd move your archers back to the wall behind it so it keeps your archers alive and they can then continue to fire as your melee troops slow them down. So ideally you'd keep moving your archers back through each tier to keep them alive as long as possible and that's your best chance of winning a battle. Of course, if you're not watching it carefully, you'll see they'll get into the uh, centre of the castle and start doing a lot of damage. See, they're going all the way up now. We've got a stray horse. So yeah, this uh, battle is essentially over for me. But it gives you a taster of what the uh, new siege battles look like. Our men are running from the battle they're, they're running away. <laughs> exactly. So there you have it. Um, I hope you've enjoyed this brief sort of taster of Shogun 2. There's tons of stuff I haven't shown you and I want to show you and, you know, we could be here all day. But um, I hope you've enjoyed it. Of course, I'm here for questions. And thank you.